This is a revision video on the musculoskeletal system and it's geared towards the Irish Leaving Cert Biology course. In this chapter, we'll cover the skeleton, the bones and bone growth and remodeling, and also the joints. Let's begin with the functions of the skeleton and there are four that you must be able to discuss. Function number one is support. Without the skeleton, we would look something like this jellyfish here in the picture. The second is movement. The third is protection. Think of the brain protected by the skull and the heart and the lungs protected by the ribcage. The fourth is a very important function of bone, the manufacture of components of the blood. For example, the red blood cells, those erythrocytes, the white blood cells, those leukocytes, and the platelets, the thrombocytes, they're all produced in the red bone marrow of bone. So let's go into the structure of the skeleton. It's made up of two parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. So the axial skeleton, the first thing I do is draw a circle for the skull, then I draw a line for the spine, a box for the rib cage, and that dot is the sternum. And they're all the parts of the axial skeleton. The arrow at the end is the coccyx, but that's part of the spine. It's really important that you know that the spine is made up of individual bones known as the vertebrae, 33 of them, 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral and 4 coccyx or coccygeal. It's really important that you do know the name and the number of each of those vertebrae. So Gary has come up with a great rhyme to help us remember them. Thanks very much, Gary. So the rhyme is Charlie tells Larry something clever. So Charlie is the cervical, tells are the thoracic, Larry is the lumbar, something is the sacral and clever is the coccyx or the coccygeal vertebrae. Sitting in between each of those vertebrae are these discs of cartilage and cartilage is a type of connective tissue and they're to cushion the bone and to absorb shock. So they're there as a shock absorber. So the last part of the axial skeleton is the rib cage. It's made up of 12 pairs of ribs. The first seven are known as true ribs because they wrap around and they are attached to the sternum or to the breastbone. The next three are called false ribs because they don't directly attach to the sternum. They attach to the seventh pair of ribs. And the last two pairs of ribs are known as the floating ribs because they don't attach to anything, the seventh pair nor to the sternum. So the appendicular skeleton is made up of two girdles, the first of which is the pectoral girdle. Think of your pecs. It's made up of your scapula and your clavicle, so your shoulder blade and your collarbone, and you've got two of those. It's also made up of the bones of the arms, the humerus, the radius and the ulna, and it's also made up of the bones of the hand, so the carpals, the metacarpals and the phalanges. And just think of carpals, C for catching, and you'll connect those with the hand. So the next part of the appendicular skeleton is the pelvic girdle made up of your pelvis and then also the bones of the legs and the feet. So the bones of the legs are the femur, the tibia and the fibula and then the bones of the feet are the tarsals, the metatarsals and the phalanges and just think of T for tarsals, T for toes. So let's go on to bone structure. The parts of the bone are as follows. The long part is known as the diaphysis and the ends are known as the epiphyses. It's important to remember that bone is a living tissue. It's a type of connective tissue and we sometimes forget this because of its hardness. There are two types of bone, spongy bone and compact bone. Compact bone is found on the whole bone surface but is thickest at the diaphysis. It has an organic component called collagen which gives it flexibility and it also has an inorganic component calcium phosphate, these salts that give it particular strength. It has many bone cells embedded within, these are called osteocytes and it has a good blood supply. So compact bone is associated with strength but also flexibility because of that collagen. The other type of bone is spongy bone found in the epiphyses. It's made up of bony bars and bony plates, so therefore it's not as dense as compact bone. There's lots of spaces and in these spaces there is red bone marrow and this is where the components of the blood, the blood cells, are made. So spongy bone, because it's made up of those bony bars and bony plates and that space, lightens the load, it lowers bone density, it makes bone that little bit lighter, but it still does offer a great deal of strength and rigidity. So if you were to look inside a bone, you would see this cavity running through the diaphysis. This is known as the medullary cavity and it's filled with a fatty substance, yellow bone marrow, in adults. So it's a way of storing excess fat. But in children, it would be filled with red bone marrow. And you know that red bone marrow makes those blood cells. If adults ever need to make more blood cells, 
uh, they could convert or the yellow marrow can be converted back into red bone marrow. The fact that there is this cavity, this hole running through the middle of the bone is there to reduce the weight of the bone. At the end of the bones is this layer of cartilage and cartilage is there to act as a shock absorber. So it's to allow for the friction free movement of the bones to prevent them becoming damaged. Covering the rest of the surface of the bone where there is no cartilage is this membrane known as the periosteum. The periosteum contains very special bone building cells called osteoblasts and also contains many nerve cells. So how do bones grow? How do they get longer? Well, bone growth is controlled by the activity of these special structures known as growth plates. Growth plates are found where the epiphyses and the diaphyses meet at either end of the bone and they're made of cartilage and their activity determines how long or the length a bone will become. Your bones will get longer until the age of around 18. After this, there'll be no increase in length because the growth plates are inactive. Growth plates work by producing cartilage. Cells produce cartilage. This cartilage then gets covered over in this collagen matrix made by the bone building cells, the osteoblasts. This collagen matrix then gets covered over in calcium phosphate and this forms hard bone. Bone formation generally happens around week eight in embryo development. Bones will not get any longer, but they will be remodeled and this is how it happens. So inside the medullary cavity are this special group of cells called the osteoclasts. Think of C for chipping. Their job is to break down bone on the inside, so inside the medullary cavity. And on the outside, you've got the bone building cells, the osteoblasts, building up new bone on the outside. The osteoblasts work by producing this collagen matrix and that gets covered over in calcium phosphate, that inorganic calcium phosphate. So your medullary cavity is going to get wider throughout your life and your bone is generally going to increase in diameter because of being broken down at the inside and built up on the outside. So what has an impact on bone development and bone building? Well, weight bearing exercises are important because they stimulate the osteoblasts. As well as that, you need a diet, a good diet, rich in calcium because of all of that calcium that's needed for the bones and hormones play a role as well. So next we have to talk about joints very quickly. So joints are where bones meet and there are different types. There are those joints, for example, those in the skull that are fused where there is no movement. Then there's those that have slight movement, for example, in between the vertebrae. And then there's those joints that are fully movable, otherwise referred to as synovial joints. And you'd find them in your hip and your knee and in your ankle. You should be able to draw a detailed diagram of a synovial joint and this is covered so often at junior cycle, I'm sure you could do it on your own. So basically in your diagram, don't forget to draw in ligaments connecting bone to bone, synovial fluid acting as a shock absorber and lubricating the joint, tendons connecting muscle to bone and then the cartilage at the end of the bone, which is there to absorb shock and to allow for the friction free movement of the bones. So one disorder of the musculoskeletal system would be osteoarthritis. It's generally caused by wear and tear on the joints or old age and the treatment would be anti-inflammatory medication and possibly surgery to replace the joint or the damaged joint. So that concludes the video on the skeleton. Please be aware that all of the icons used to create the pictures are from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member but I still wish to credit the artists. Please also be aware that these videos are not intended for commercial use and are not made for monetary gain and they never replace the use of a textbook or listening to your teacher. Best of luck.